So, you're considering making a move to Merritt Island, Florida, but you want to make sure you know everything before you make the move. Merritt Island is not for everyone, so there are definitely a few things you should know so that you can figure out if it's the best fit for you. So I have come up with the top 10 things you should know before moving to Merritt Island, Florida. And if you stick around to the very end, I'm going to give you two little bonus household items that you have to purchase when you move here. So make sure you stick around to the end. For a bit of context in terms of geography, Merritt Island is located on the east coast of Florida on the Atlantic coast. We are in the middle of the state centrally located, so we're about an hour and 15 minutes away from Disney World. We are three hours north of Miami, six hours north of Key West, and about two and a half hours south of Jacksonville. I wanted to lay that out for you so you can see that Florida is not a small state. It is very big. So anyways, I absolutely love living in Merritt Island, and there are some things I think you should know before you make the decision to move here because it's not for everyone. The first item on our list today is that Merritt Island's development took off in the 1960s, resulting in a unique blend of old Florida charm and an eclectic mix of infrastructure from the 1960s, 70s, and newer developments. If you appreciate some character and infrastructure diversity, Merritt Island might be an attractive option for you. However, if you prefer a more modern and uniform living environment, you might find places like Vera to be a better fit. Your choice between the two will ultimately depend on your personal preferences and lifestyle. All right, number two on our list is traffic lights in Florida in general. These things are the masters of time dilation. They're so long that you might contemplate life's mysteries, <laughs> learn a new A language, or write your memoirs while waiting. They could be solving complex math problems or hosting a book club for fellow traffic lights. So if you ever dream of taking up knitting, these lights are your golden opportunity. And just breathe, enjoy the view, and maybe bring a pack of lunch because by the time they turn green, they might be planning your retirement. Number three, brace yourself for the wild world of Florida drivers. Blinkers here are apparently optional accessories. Only about half the population cut the memo. I get cut off and tailgated very often. This is just my personal observation and I'm not using any official traffic data or safety reports. But amidst the chaos, I always remind myself that I'm surrounded by sunshine and palm trees, which somehow makes dealing with these road warriors a little bit more bearable. So just stay vigilant out there. All right, before we get to number four, if you're new here, I'm Rachel Langley with Blue Marlin Real Estate. And in this channel, we talk about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play, and those pros and cons of different cities in the Space Coast. So make sure you tap that little subscribe button, click the little bell so you're notified every time I do a new video. I get calls from people all the time, just like you, that are considering a move to Merritt Island, Florida. So if you're thinking about buying a second home, investment property, or relocating to the area, please feel free to reach out. You can call, email, text, DM me, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, number four on the list, the online negativity about Merritt Island and Florida in general. When it comes to the internet, especially online forums and social media, it's like the wild west of opinions out there. You're going to stumble upon posts and comments from folks who might as well be professional keyboard warriors, armed with their virtual pitchforks and torches, ready to critique about every little thing about newcomers and the area in general. Of course, pointing out cons like I am is super important when educating yourself on an area. But please take some of that negativity with a grain of salt. Overall, since moving here a few years ago, I've felt super welcomed here and people are overall super friendly. As someone who calls Merritt Island home, I can vouch for its awesomeness. The beaches close by are pristine, the weather is generally fantastic, and the sense of community is something special. Number five. Let's talk about the weather. While everyone raves about year-round sunshine, there are some downsides to consider. During the summer months, the sun can be intense, and if you plan to hit the beaches, be prepared with high-quality sunscreen and limit your sun exposure. Midday sun could be scorching with UV indexes, which are often reaching 11 to 13. So in the summer, outdoor activities are best done earlier or later in the day. Additionally, there's a rainy season from July to September with daily afternoon showers due to the high temperatures and humidity. Driving during these downpours, especially during rush hour, can be challenging. On the bright side, there are about three to four months, namely November to February, where you can enjoy open windows and never have to worry about shoveling snow. 
a definite perk of the weather here. The biggest advice I can give to you is to make sure you wear your sunscreen year round. I don't know the stats, but skin cancer seems to be a little bit more prevalent. I've just had a couple of friends have to get some marks removed. So just always make sure if you're gonna move down here, and this is for anywhere in general, just a piece of advice, always wear your sunscreen on your face and your arms, even when, you know, day to day driving around. All right, moving on to our sixth point. The cost of living on Merritt Island is worth discussing. It falls somewhere in the middle when compared to neighboring areas. While Merritt Island can be considered relatively more expensive than properties located inland, such as cities like Titusville and Coco, it offers a more budget-friendly alternative when compared to the pricier areas like Coco Beach and Cape Canaveral. Another factor contributing to the cost of living on Merritt Island is the availability of amenities and services. The convenience of being close to shopping centers, restaurants, and recreational facilities often comes with a slightly higher price tag. Moving on to number seven, it's crucial to be aware of the phenomenon known as snowbird season on Merritt Island, which typically spans from November to April. During these months, the area experiences an influx of seasonal visitors from colder northern states, seeking warmer refuge from the winter weather. While this influx can be beneficial for the local economy, it does come with some noticeable downsides. Firstly, the increase in population during snowbird season inevitably leads to heavier traffic, especially in beachside areas. Merritt Island's roadways can become more congested heading into those beachside areas and it can make daily commutes and outings a bit more time consuming. Another aspect to consider is the impact on driving behavior like I mentioned earlier. With increased population and many visitors who may not be familiar with local roads, there's often a perception that there are more inexperienced or careless drivers on the road during snowbird season. This can just lead to a little bit more time to get places, just adding about five minutes, and then also just, you know, being aware of your surroundings because a lot of people are will be in the wrong lane and they need to get in the other lane, they'll hold you up because they're trying to get in the other lane. So just be aware of all that, but otherwise it's not too bad. Number eight on our list has both advantages and disadvantages. Living in Florida, a popular vacation destination, means that you'll frequently have friends and family reaching out to let you know they're planning a visit. While this can be exciting and enjoyable, it comes with some complexities. Sometimes your loved ones might choose vacation destinations like Miami or Tampa, which are just two to four hours away. However, it can be challenging to coordinate these visits when you have a full-time job. Additionally, when family and friends do visit, they often want to explore attractions like Disney or Universal, go to the beach, Kennedy Space Center, and it can be quite costly and strain your budget. So on the positive side, having family and friends eager to visit is a testament to the allure of our location. However, these visits can also be distracting, especially when you're trying to balance work and entertainment. Number nine is all about landscaping, or more accurately, taming the jungle vegetation that thrives due to the combination of abundant sunshine and frequent rain. This natural growth can be overwhelming with a diverse array of beautiful plant life that often demands some significant maintenance. If you have a passion for landscaping, this can be a wonderful opportunity. Before moving here, we used to handle our lawn care, but upon arriving, we opted to hire an affordable landscaper due to the extensive upkeeping required, especially in the summertime heat. If you choose to maintain your lawn yourself, remember to tackle the work either early in the morning or during the cooler evening hours to beat the sweltering midday sun in the summer. All right, last but not least is hurricanes. Mare Island is on a barrier island that is occasionally at the risk of hurricanes, which may require evacuation when we reach a certain level of severity. However, it's important to know that this doesn't happen every year and direct hits are relatively rare. Merritt Island's geography provides some natural protection and hurricanes often veer away or weaken before making landfall here. Nonetheless, it's essential to be aware that the possibility of a hurricane affecting the area always exists. Being prepared, having a hurricane plan in place, and staying informed during hurricane season is wise, even if direct hits are infrequent. It's all about being ready for the unexpected and ensuring your safety and that of your loved ones in case such a situation arises. Now that I've covered the top 10 crucial things to know before moving to Merritt Island, Florida, let's dive into the two bonus items that are an absolute must have when moving to the area. First on the bonus list is tinted windows for your car. And this is especially vital if you have leather seats like me. 
When I relocated here, I had to get this done immediately because it felt like my car seats were scorching my skin off every time I sat down. Moving on to the second bonus, consider getting a generator, even if it's a smaller one, to just power your refrigerator or Wi-Fi. Our area experiences strong storms, tropical storms, and occasionally hurricanes, which can result in power outages that last for several days. While personally, I've never been without power for more than four hours, there are some areas in our town that have experienced multi-day outages before. So, I hope my list of 10 things you have to know before moving to Merritt Island, Florida helps you in making your decision. Even with all the negatives, I have no regrets moving to Merritt Island. To me, the beaches, the sunshine, and the great weather completely outweighs all of those negatives. If you don't feel like Merritt Island is the right spot, but you are still moving to the area, I am happy to help you figure out which town or city may work better for you. Comment below any questions you may have about living in Brevard County. Make sure you reach out. You can call, text, email me, and I'd be happy to help you with your relocation to the area. I'm Rachel Langley. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.